Today I will be considering the book of Revelation. So how are we doing today? Thank you for joining me. My name is Judith Mendoza. I am an ordained minister and a witness of Jehovah. In a witness according to 1 Samuel 12, 5. Isaiah 43, 12 and Micah 1, 2. And so I invite you to take out your Bible and so we can consider today's topic in this spiritual retreat taking some time to study what the Bible says so four horsemen at the gallop vision number three out of the 16 visions that were given to John by an angel that was sent by Jesus Christ to give revelations or a revelation to John from God. I will be using the New World Translation and also the Good News Bible. So I hope everyone is okay today and also that you are taking care of yourself, right? We are still in the midst of a pandemic and so um, the only thing that uh, we can do is to protect ourselves covering our nose our mouth and um, making sure that we are conscious of any health risks and so Today, we are going to consider in the book of Revelation, Apocalypse, the third vision. And this is found in the book of Revelation, chapter 6, starting from verse 1 to 17. Now, when you reason from the scriptures when you ask godly guidance when you ask god for guidance according to james 1 5 he will give us the holy spirit or god's power for us to have understanding and indeed that's what happens especially when we're seeking the truth and remember Jesus is the truth he uh, has fulfilled prophecy prophecy continues to be fulfilled and it will continue to be fulfilled even forever because God is forever he will continue to have uh, interaction with humans we are his creation right so it is not something that uh, maybe we humans humans in general right because it's not just one certain group but humans in general like to separate things and we like to separate from from God we like to separate things from God right and find another other reasons as to why things are but there is human wisdom and there is godly wisdom human wisdom is short sighted when you're when you view things from ma from or matters when you view matters from god's point of view you have better understanding 
of why things are and how they function. When you don't, then uh, we become short-sighted. And depending on our tendency, right? If our personal tendency is to become stubborn, we're not teachable, we don't want to step out of the box, we want to continue with our own thinking, even though we may realize it's incorrect, our stubbornness does not permit us to move further or maybe because of fear of men. So what is fear of men, right? Maybe, maybe you haven't heard that terminology. Fear of men is not just that you fear people, right? It's not fearing people just because people exist or fearing people because of their race or where they come from. No, that's, that's not the type of fear of men or of humans that I'm speaking about. The Bible speaks about fear of men when it has to do with what people may think of me if I am doing this or that. Fear of men, the terminology that the Bible uses, has to do with that I may decide, for example, that I might do this or might not do that, depending on what people may think of me. So that is what fear of men is, that uh, one may want to do something, but because someone may, may think of me in a negative way, I stop from doing what I need to do. And I am talking about doing things that are good. I am not talking about doing bad right because the doing of the bad is actually uh, what some don't have any problem with doing right for example um, we Jehovah Witnesses go through in certain instances go through different um, trials and difficulties because uh, we are the minority in groups, right? So for example, uh, let's say when, when you're at work, and someone says, well, don't you celebrate birthdays? Come on, it's only food, eat the cake. So what am I going to do? Am I going to succumb to, to what others are saying and doing because they are the majority? And so am I going to be having fear of what others may think based on things that maybe they don't know, right? Because we want to please God and sometimes we don't know that some things that we may do are not pleasing to God. So that's an example. That is an example of what fear of men can be right that you're the minority in a group 
by obedience to God. And, and I will touch those subjects in regards to why we don't celebrate certain things. But it has to do with, um, I explained it yesterday a little bit, that we are followers of the Christ. There's no scripture whatsoever in the Bible that mentions that neither in the past nor later on in Jesus Christ's time or after Jesus Christ, there were followers of the Christ celebrating what was considered pagan celebrations. So we don't. Besides, these celebrations are connected to worship of things that what things are called detestable because they are uh, tied to satanic worship if you look if you look at the information where these customs come from you will find out that they are tied to different beliefs that people had in the past that had to do with with worship of satan and so we do not want to be mixed mixing pure worship with worship of satan right it matters what we do it matters what we do with our physical body it matters what we say with our mouth whatever i say with my mouth it is believed to be what I believe, what I like. When I say I don't like something, that means that me, my body, the existence of me don't like certain things or like certain things. So I have just as well as many other humans the capacity, the ability, and the gift of speech that I can put my thoughts that are in my mind, my beliefs, what I represent, who is I, Judith, come through my mouth. And so therefore, whenever someone hears me speak, see me speaking, see me using my mouth hear my voice this is what they believe to be me to be I Judith to be what I represent to be my background to be uh, the way that I was raised the reputation that I have is built on what I do with my physical body right so all of it has to do with it so then going back right going back and and i was saying this because god knows each and every one of us and we all have a responsibility for ourselves no one no one can gain salvation for other for another so God knows how much I can do, how much I can understand, and how much I can apply from what I'm learning, from what I know. God knows if I am doing something because I don't understand it. And so he gives me the opportunity, he teach me, he sends someone to teach me, to correct my ways. Just like how he did with Job. If you read the book of Job, it is excellent. You will learn how God deals with humans in regards to discipline, disciplining us. Just like how a child is disciplined by a parent. So, we ask God to give us direction. To help us understand to give us his power in order to understand, he will do so. And again, he knows, God knows how much we can 
are able to do, are able to understand, and he will help us in our way to becoming spiritual beings, right? Because we are not born spiritually beings with faith. We have to build that in us. Parents have to teach their children. Parents have to, especially dad, especially the father, has the weightier responsibility to teach the children, to take the lead in doing that it, when it comes to spiritual matters. And also in other matters, but when it comes to spiritual matters also. So today I am going to speak about the third vision that John sees. But I want you, I want to take you back and I'm going to use the Good News Bible and I want to take you back because as I mentioned before, the scriptures, the prophecies back one another. Right? It is that way. If you, if you have noticed in the Bible, it is that way. Jehovah God said the first prophecy after Adam and Eve has sinned. He said how on Genesis 3.15, he mentioned how he will correct everything. One verse, Genesis 3.15, God said how he will fix everything that had happened. We had no idea. We had no idea whatsoever how it will happen. And the reason why God does this, right? Because God help us to see with signs and symbols, which the book of Revelation is about signs and symbols. And we, we are seeing God's personality. And the reason why he does this is because right now, God is doing his dealings in the midst of his enemy his chief enemy satan he doesn't want to know he wants he doesn't want god does not want to let satan know what he will do what he's doing so he gives assignments to his angels and prophecy is being fulfilled he has tell us from the beginning what will happen in the end and we have been seeing that genesis 3 15 he said already what how he was going to fix everything one verse We are seeing how intelligent Jehovah God is. And imagine, we are promised that if we uh, become imitators of God, we can be having insight, having knowledge as God has and for me personally to have that insight to have the 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 knowledge that I have from God that of course I was able to gain the principles of everything that the Bible says, because someone showed me. And of course, that is through the organization of Jehovah's Witnesses. Before that, I didn't know that God had a name. I didn't even know that. 
Then after, when I started studying the Bible, I went to the library and I checked everything that I was being told. So everything I got verified, I've been, I started with researching the spiritual matters, right? And so 29 years later, I have gone up and down in my spiritual roadway but we are imperfect humans which is not an excuse right it's not an excuse so we have to continue with the guidance it's not that you know it one time and then you know it every time it's something that we have to continuously studying the Bible that is why we also go to the meetings now going back now to the Revelation the book of Revelation chapter 6 chapter 6 speaks about these four horse riders the first rider that you see is a white horse the white horse and I am going to read it first from before going to the other scripture right because prophecy back itself Jehovah speaks that something is going to happen then he goes ahead and confirm it then he speak again he confirmed that and then he confirmed again he confirmed through others and that this is exactly what has happened with this uh, vision here so when you go to Revelation chapter 6 it says this 6 1 and 2 the third vision begins and I saw when the lamb opened one of the seven seals remember that there was no one that could open the seals but then the lamb appears John was crying he's told don't cry there is someone who can open the seals from the scroll so 6 1 says and I saw when the lamb opened one of the seven seals and I heard one of the four living creatures say with a voice like thunder come and I saw and look a white horse and the one seated on it had a bow and a crown was given him and he went out conquering and to complete his conquest so that's one and two and it goes up to eight I believe so then he says when he opened the second seal I heard the second living creature say come and another came out a fiery colored horse and it was granted to the one seated on it to take peace away from the earth so that they should slaughter one another and he was given a great sword five says when he opened the third seal i heard the living creature say come and i saw and look a black horse and the one seated on it had a pair of scales in his hand and six verse six says and i heard what sounded like a voice in the midst of the four living creatures say a quart of the wheat for a denarius and three quarts of barley for a denarius and do and do not harm the olive oil and the wine then seven says when he opened the fourth seal i heard the voice of the fourth living creature say come eight says verse eight and I saw and look a pale horse and the one seated on it had the name death and the grave was closely following him and authority was given them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with a long sword and with food shortage and with a deadly plague and by the wild beast of the earth when he When he opened when he opened the fifth seal, I saw underneath 
the altar the souls of those slaughtered because of the word of God and because of the witness they had given. So up to eight, right? Up to eight is about the four, the four horsemen, right? So now, what is this talking about? This goes back to what was already being said that will happen then in the book of revelation it gives confirmation again on this third vision this is um what have been said right if you go back now we have four horses white represents purity red represents war the black horse black think about what black represents when people use black usually black is sadness right so black represents a period of time this these all represent what will be happening on the earth at the time of the end right so then we have the the black horse with the scales right represents what, what do you do with scales because the scales that are that are in his hand and uh and, and besides that he he's very slim right cachetic so he's 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 like he's like dying he's you can see his ribs right so he has a pair of scales in his hands and so remember who's first the white horse right so there is war there is hunger food is being rationed and uh, then there is the pale horse and its rider following that and pale horse uh, is, uh, and then death is following it. So basically that represents that a lot of people will be dying, right? And the dark horse, uh, the black horse, of course, uh, represents everything that has to do with war and what war causes. Pestilences, hunger, and do you have any any remembrance in regards to what Jesus said will happen in the last days? Right? And this is what I was going to look for. When you go to Matthew, Matthew chapter 25. Okay, when you go to Matthew 24, right? Matthew 24 starts in 24. Um, the apostles ask him a question in regards to the temple. And uh, then he says uh, on 3, 24, 3 stars, he says, as Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him in private. Tell us, when all these will be, they ask, and what will happen to show that it is time for your coming and the end of the age? So look at the question. 
The disciples are asking, when will you be returning back to the earth? And Jesus said to them that uh, there will be many signs, many things going on. He said, watch out and do not let anyone fool you. Many men claiming to speak for me will come and say, I am the Messiah. And they will fool many people. You are going to hear the noise of battles close by and the news of battles far away, but do not be troubled. Such things must happen, but they do not mean that the end has come. Right? How long ago did first the first war in the world happen? That was 1914. 1914 is the time that when you go into the scriptures and you look at prophecy, just as how prophecy directed at the time when Jesus will be born and everyone was in expectation of his birth, it is just the same as how when he will be enthroned because remember jesus takes the kingdom he gets anointed just like david david got anointed to become king but he was not seated as king until years later it is the same thing that happened with jesus christ he was seated and has been seated until god gave him the go ahead go ahead and rule in the midst of his enemies. This happened since 1914. There is biblical timeline that directs us to that time. Therefore, you have the white horse, the rider, Jesus Christ, who is enthroned. He begins to rule in 1914 and soon then He will complete his con his his uh, his galloping, his conquest, his ruling in the midst of his enemies. Because right now he's ruling in the midst of those who are followers of the Christ, who are doing obediently his work, the preaching and teaching work. So then. He said, these things will happen. And then he confirms it again in Revelation through the vision that he gave to John with the horses. So he said it to his disciples when they asked him. And he said, the end is not yet. Back then, years ago. The end was not yet. These horses, this the uh, fiery color horse, which represents the warfare, world war that happened in and since 1914. That world war then now depicts the black horse the rider denotes famine food shortages that have never ended and no matter what has been done what we humans try to do we can't get rid of these things even though science has been advanced to 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 have much advancement There have been badness and greed that doesn't make it to help out, to, to, to help the millions of people that are suffering. Therefore, that, that horse that represents, because remember, this book of Revelation is symbolic it symbolizes, and god is speaking in terms of human terms 
so that we can understand it. It's galloping in the horse. They are galloping. Meaning that it is, it is going fast. These things are happening fast. Look at all that has happened with this last pandemic that we have had that it looks like it's going to stay. All of these things are bundled together. So it's like we're trying to fight against these things, but there's going to be a time, obviously, obviously there's going to be a time when we are going to be not able to, 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 to do much for ourselves. We have had some of, some of it with this pandemic. Back then it was, some years ago, it was with um, AIDS, which people are still dying from these things. People are dying from, from other diseases also. So it isn't that we're not, we're not getting rid of them. We can control them in some type of way, but there are many things, right? There are many things that stop the process of uh, providing a cure because it isn't like uh, uh, everybody is going to say well you know what let's 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 help one another right so um, Jesus continuing he said on 7 24 7 he said countries will fight each other kingdoms will attack one another there will be famines in earthquakes everywhere all these things are like the first pains of childbirth then you will be arrested and handed over to be punished and be put to death all mankind will hate you because of me because of being followers of the Christ so doing good for some will be bad imagine many will give up their faith at that time they will betray one another and hate one another then many false prophets will appear and fool many people such will be the spread of evil that many people's love will grow cold but whoever holds out to the end will be saved and this good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout all the world for a witness to all mankind. And then the end will come. Hasn't it happened that way? Yes, it has. Prophecy is being fulfilled right in front of us. All these things that Jesus Christ spoke to his disciples and explained to them have happened. The horse uh, that are riding right they are not literal horses riding in heaven of course not these horses represent the prophecies being fulfilled jesus christ said it to his disciples and then years later through john right on 96 90 something ce 90 from 96 98 ce then John wrote this vision that was given to him. Again, confirming, confirming what Jesus Christ has said. Later on, also, uh, or at the same time that the preaching work was happening, there were other revelations in regards to how the, the last days will be. For example, if we go to the book of um, Timothy, there it reveals also what else will be going on. In 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 6, it says this, But know this, that in the last days critical 
times hard to deal with will be here for men and this is the reason why this happens right because war does not happen by itself war doesn't come from air war is caused by humans it, it, within their families if there's no peace within communities there's no peace within states within cities within countries countries and other countries right so the situation gets from smaller to bigger but it's humans who are doing this and this is the reason why right this is the tendencies that cause this in us humans in order for us to do these things but if we are all peaceable right which is something that i will be speaking tomorrow in regards to that right because um i read something and there is a contradiction in it you know uh the, Peaceful people shouldn't be feared. Peaceful people are not to be feared. Peaceful humans are no threat to anyone. Okay, so 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 6 or 7. Let's read. And it starts in 1. And this is the characteristics that make all of this happen. All of these prophecies. The love of many will die out. Okay? And something else replaces it. So, but know this, that in the last days, critical times, hard to deal with, will be here. For men will be lovers of themselves. Lovers of money. There's There, there is no problem with having money having businesses doing business in an honest way not that you're going to steal people by selling products that are not good or by selling an amount of something that is less than what they have paid or um doing fraudulent things or anything badness like that right so that is not what the bible uh talks about or condemns what the Bible condemns is dishonesty when we are dishonest and we take advantage of others so it says for men will be lovers of themselves lovers of money boastful boasting or or or, or putting oneself above others and um, what else haughty blasphemers disobedient to parents unthankful disloyal having no natural affection and natural affection is what one naturally will feel for a human being that is a family member one will feel love for your family member that will be gone and that has been shown to be the, the case then it says not open to any agreement everyone is my way or no other way it doesn't matter if it's something that is and i'm not talking about something that is not beneficial i'm talking about things that are beneficial things that are good for self good for others beneficial for self beneficial for others right so not open to any agreement slanderers without self-control fears without love of goodness betrayers headstrong puffed up with pride lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of god having an appearance of godliness but proving false to its power and from these turn away right so i read up to five in there those are what we humans or what some humans right because i don't display that type of uh, characteristics i 
maybe did in the past before becoming a witness when I was a teenager, right? But as you study the Bible, and this is the only way one can really be transformed in the mind because you know that there is an existence of a God that is living and that we must give an answer to about what we're doing. So the white horse represents Jesus Christ enthroned as king. As soon as that happens, Satan goes on the attack and causes the humans that he has under his control and manipulating because Satan is the one who's behind the scenes and such they, they are given power that's what he says because Satan is giving them the power to move them to war and that happened in 1914 So, with the death of Archduke Ferdinand, according to history, after that, they went to war, as it was prophesied. Then war came, Jesus Christ starts ruling in the midst of his enemies. And remember, Jesus Christ has taken the rulership from King David. So, he's taken a human kingdom. And so, all other human kingdoms are his enemies. The best thing to do is to, according to Psalms, Psalms chapter 2, if you read it, is to turn around and make peace with this king Jesus Christ not to go against him because it will definitely end in a day of judgment for all of us right all of us including me because I can be preaching here today and teaching but uh, maybe tomorrow I'm doing something else and then Whatever I did yesterday is canceled out by whatever badness I do tomorrow. So all of us need to be on the watch for ourselves as to what we do, what we're saying, how we're portraying ourselves, right? Because as he says there, some are given the impression that they are spiritual people, but they are not. That they are godly people, but they are not. Is, is they're just wear, wearing on the outside a look to impress others so we want to impress Jehovah God we want to impress Jesus Christ become followers of him and have their approval right so we have to make sure we have choices that we can take and make but who do we want to please? There's only two choices that we have in regards to how we will fare. Either Jehovah and Jesus Christ or Satan, his demons and his people. Or Jehovah, Jesus Christ and their people or Satan, the, de the demons and their people. Genesis 3.15, there are only two organizations, the one that Satan created and the one Jehovah God has had. So whatever we do, we have, we have choices, right, that we can take and make. And depending on how we behave, we are demonstrating in what side we are so i can speak a lot with my mouth and say that i am doing this i am doing that but whatever i am doing it's 
actually what's going to show to demonstrate right not to make a show words have different meanings words can be used in different occasions for different things so when i say show i mean demonstrate i mean demonstrate right show meanings that others see what i demonstrate by the way that i comport myself with my family with my friends at work when i am out when i am anywhere right so it's not just being a christian a follower of the christ only when you go to church on sunday or whatever day you go right and for me it's not only when i am doing preaching work or when i am going to the meetings that i go to uh, twice per week so we have these horses representing these things that jesus christ spoke about in matthew that will happen the book of revelation is symbolic is there's there's nothing to fear about it god is using symbolic language for us to understand it from human terminology in human terms and so next week today i consider the four horsemen and what they meant what they mean right keep in mind that jesus christ is was established as king in 1914 and he has been ruling in the midst of his enemies since then soon all these other horses that are not literal horses they are symbolic horses representing war the red horse representing famine the black horse and 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 hunger and all of the disasters and everything that will occur that will cause that humans according to second timothy 3 1 through 5 will end up doing right so then it ends with the pale horse they all are together as it happened since the war started in 1914 and these things have been happening since then but soon soon they will be stopped and jesus christ will completely take over the earth and the humans that he is ruling over right so on 9 i had read in regards to um revelation continuing and that will be for next thursday revelation 6 9 continues with that john describes a moving scene something happens also right so it's the horseman writing and then john says on 6 9 of revelation 6 9 he says and when he opened the fifth seal i saw underneath the altar the souls of those slaughtered because of the word of god and because of the witness work that they used to have right so uh in 6 10 continues and they cried with a loud voice saying until when sovereign lord holy and true are you refraining from judging and avenging our blood upon those who dwell on the earth right so this will be for next week because at the same time it was mentioned that at the same time that it is this is happening on the book of matthew chapter 24 it was mentioned that they will be thrown in jail and they will be persecuted those who are following the christ has that happened yes 
it has it continues to happen but we see that on revelation 16 those who are followers of the christ are asking until when right and the answer will be given so that will be for next thursday tomorrow i will have another topic as i mentioned and it will be in regards to those who are peaceful humans should not be feared those humans who like peace who are peaceful who keep away from violence should not be feared that's what tomorrow's topic will be all right so i hope you have a wonderful thursday and uh until tomorrow <laughs>